In this video, I'd like to take folks through just the basics of the interface regarding Unreal Game Engine. Uh, for the version that I'm using, this is 4.272. Uh, just as a side note, uh, 5.0, they did actually upgrade the UI a little bit. So this is really kind of the last version of how this UI is going to look as far as the fours are concerned. So let's go ahead and get started. One thing to point out that if you really want an interactive experience as far as learning the interface, in the upper right hand corner, you may have noticed that there's like a little hat uh, graduation cap with green that you can click on and it will actually give you a little interactive tour of the Unreal Game Engine environment. So I'm going to exit out of this though for right now. I encourage folks that especially if you're starting out, you know, great resource there. Like most software packages, the first thing I'm going to point out is you do have a men menu bar going across the top here in the upper left. You don't have a lot on the main menu bar in Unreal, but some of the big things include your file as far as saving and opening projects, uh, levels, etc. As far as the edit goes, probably the biggest thing you're going to find here is as you advance in Unreal, your management of your plugins that are uh, added into the game engine. From an intermediate introductory level, I would also say the window drop-down menu is pretty important. So often I will have students that will accidentally move something or close something. They're not sure what they did. One nice thing is under the window drop-down menu here, you can load things such as like the default editor layout. And this is normally what I encourage students to do is that if you close something and you're not 100% what you closed, just come under this window drop down and just go right back to the default layout. That way then uh, it'll put everything back where it was and you'll be back on track. Lastly, yes, you have the help as far as you can get to tutorials. It'll also give you as far as the documentation, if you want to open that directly from inside the game engine and a lot of other application elements here. So that's the main menu bar. Now we're going to get into the nitty gritty as far as the overall interface, as far as some of the core tabs and windows that you will be working with in the Unreal game engine. So to start off with, you have over on the left hand side the place actor element. Place actors, these are all of the different elements that can be placed in your scene environment here. And you can actually see here in this main center scene environment, you have a lot of elements already in place here, such as the little widgets denoting things such as player start, or even objects like my chair and my floors here that I am able to left click on. However, in the place actor tab here, you have a sub menu system going along the left hand side here. So I can actually come in under lights, cinematics, you know, so on and so forth and click through and see all of the different areas here. One thing just to point out real quickly at this level and in other videos I will get more into is there is a difference between such as the static mesh actor that is the cube in basic versus the geometric box. This is going to utilize what is called a brush. These elements can actually have different materials added onto them and also you can edit as far as a little bit more for vertex points, uh, edges, and faces. That's just a quick note I want to make on the actors here. Very often I'll see folks, they see the basic place actor tab and immediately they just start dragging and dropping stuff into the game environment. The next thing I'd like to point out is across the top here, you have a menuing system that is more specific to the actual game environment or scene itself. You have things such as save current, your source controls as far as if you want to choose, um, you know, multiple files that you're working with. Really, if you're working solo on a game, you're not going to be touching this too much. You have different modes as this becomes important later on as far as, again, I mentioned those brushes for geometry, but also whenever you get more into making landscapes and foliage elements, that's going to become important. 
you can also choose as far as opening your content browser, which actually is open already for you down at the very bottom of the screen. You also can navigate to the Unreal Marketplace that will open up in the game, the Epic uh, Games uh, application there. You also have some settings that will also come through, like if you want to change your world settings. And again, you can also access plugins here. As you're starting out, and since this is just more about the interface, I wouldn't touch these too much. As you get more advanced also, you're going to want to probably be working with blueprints. This is your blueprint uh, button. Also, as you want to, if you want to have sequences or cutscenes, here is your cinematics area. The one thing I will point out is build and play are going to be very important elements, even from a beginner introductory level. Building especially because lighting is built on the fly as far as your shadows and Unreal is concerned. You're often going to see the scene environment kind of yelling at you about lighting needs to be rebuilt. Get used to this. Uh, you can, whenever you're ready to test the game, you can build lighting only instead of building the entire game environment. Uh, that's something for a future video. You also have the play button that if I click on this, you can see I have my audio. I can actually move around my game environment here a little bit, and it'll actually bring up some stop and pause buttons for me. The last button across the top here that folks should be aware of is the launch button. This will actually build, compile, and then show your game and allow you to interact with your game as if it was actually published. The next item that I want to take you through also is the next tab, which is the world outliner. Think of this almost like layers in Photoshop, uh, you know, Unity also, if you've worked in the Unity game engine, has something very similar, where this is kind of your tracking area for all of the elements that are currently in the game level. This is a nice asset as far as number one, it keeps track for you as far as what is in the game environment. You can also show and hide different elements, but also too, if I'm out and about and I need to see the statue, for instance, I can actually double click on elements in the world outliner and it will go directly to that object for me or that actor in the environment and it'll show it to me. Along with the world outliner, another important tab is the details tab. You are going to want to get comfortable with this as far as two things. Number one, when you get into blueprints, you're going to be able to attach your blueprints to objects in the game environment. But also number two, you have things such as the materials, the actual mesh that you're working with, and also as far as transformation, as far as location, rotation, and scale that you can also set specific values for. You have a lot of different options down here as far as setting up your rendering, navigation, as far as collision, etc beyond the scope of this video, but just be aware, whenever you select an object, that area, the details area, is going to change based on what object you have selected in your game environment. And lastly for this video, just to briefly go over it, your content browser. The content browser is probably one of the most important areas as well, because this is where you're going to navigate between all of the different actors, audio, materials, particle systems, blueprints, etc. Pretty much everything is going to be stored and accessible through this area. So for instance, like if I double click on starter content here and I go under props, here you can see all of the listings for all of the different props that come pre-installed whenever I make a game that includes starter content. And notice along the top here, you see how it kind of makes a breadcrumb trail that I can navigate all the way back to content. This is also where your levels are saved. So if you have multiple levels to a game, you will see each of the levels popping up here as far as the game elements. And also this is a way that you can actually add or import additional assets that maybe you forgot to put in, or if you wanna add your own materials, your own audio, or your own 3D models. And that's the basics of the UI interface.